Hello friends and welcome. Today we're gonna to talk about this crazy strategy that you might've seen lately where Monkey King support just kills couriers the entire laning stage. Uh, it's it's kind of out there, but there's merit to it, but it's also really hard to pull off. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what you need to do if you want to do this, if someone on your team is doing this or someone on the enemy team is doing this. If you wanna do this, you're gonna go ahead and buy tangos, wind lace, blood grenade, one sentry at the least, one observer at the least, and then some iron branches could be good. A smoke would help, maybe not necessary in pubs. Now, as Monkey King runs out here, I'm gonna tell you guys, first of all, we're watching Karaomi do this, entity versus rest farmer. So this is a professional teams playing against each other. And that is step one, the tricky part of this strategy. You need to know what you're doing. Your team needs to know what they're doing because this is not something easy to pull off. And that's why I'm, I really don't recommend you do this in pubs, not to the extent that the pro teams are doing it. But I think there's a reduced version you can do. So the first thing uh, that we see here, he's gonna use mischief to come over here, capture this watcher. You can capture this watcher on your way back, I think would be fine. Uh, but he's gonna use this to help him spot couriers. Same as this observer, he's gonna come over, place it in the enemy base. Make sure, okay, first getting into the base, uh, you have two options. Mischief does not show on the mini map, but you can see it if the enemy moves their, their map uh, or their screen over to look, they can see like a tree running across. So it's kind of up to you what you wanna do. You can either level tree dance, which is like totally fine, and then hop into the base through like here, uh, and on the, the other side, it would be like through this way. You just need to be careful. Uh, so I'm actually gonna show you the enemy's perspective here. Okay, so watch the enemy's minimap right there. Did you see it? Right, right there. So be careful when you're using tree dance. If you hop for just a moment and the buildings can see you, you'll flash on the minimap. They will instantly know what you are doing. So if you're gonna hop through the trees, just be very careful, use the backline trees as much as possible, and then hop forward uh, to plant an observer if you want to do that. When you plant the observer, you mainly need to see the exit of the, the fountain. If anyone's courier is here at this time, you can consider killing it, or maybe you wait for the bounties to happen, and then you kill it. The mid courier is probably the best one you could kill, and then the ones in your lane, uh, but otherwise you don't have to sit here waiting for couriers. You can just come back to your lane and then later you'll just like see the couriers moving through here and then you'll go for them, which brings me to step two. You need extremely good map awareness for this to work. If you miss couriers on the mini map, there's literally no point to doing any of this. So not only do you need to place this stuff, you need to be constantly looking while doing other things as well. If you can't do this, just don't even bother trying this strategy. After this, you can just use mischief to get out or tree dance your way out of here. Just remember, as it turns to daytime, you cannot, or like the base can see further in the daytime. So be careful about using tree dance out and they spot you. That's why he uses mischief to move out of here and it won't show on the mini map again, but if they came over here, they would see this tree moving. Two quick reminders. You cannot kill couriers that have the fountain buff on them. They are invincible. So you have to wait for them to leave the fountain and for the buff to fade away. Second, the ancient and the fountain provide true sight. So do not put your observers too close. Uh, like over here, you're thinking like, oh, I'll see them going in all directions. You put it anywhere here, very likely that the it just shows up on the enemy minimap. So you gotta pick a side and pick the side on your lane. So just anywhere down here, uh, that'll let you see couriers moving towards the mid lane or moving towards your lane. Now on your way back, potentially grab that watcher if you didn't already, and then use the sentry to block the small camp. You can either do it on your way back to the lane, uh, on your way down. The downside of that is that if you come down here, do the sentry and then keep going blah, blah, blah into here. If they preemptively unblock this camp, then you know, you've been had. If you wait till the laning stage, you can actually put your sentry in this top corner. It'll block this camp. You can check for sentries and you can hop onto a tree, see if they placed an observer on this cliff. If there is tree dance onto it, kill it, tree dance back off. Your first objective in the laning stage is to get the lane to push into you. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this from the off laners perspective later on, but from your perspective, do whatever tricks you can to get this lane to shove out, because if you want to roam around, you need to make sure your off laner can get something out of this. And so uh, in this professional setting, DM did it. In your pub games, you're gonna have to handle this as the support monkey king potentially. I mean, you can ask the off laner to help you, but like, you know how pubs are. So. Uh, I kind of like zoomed through it. He already saw Crystal Maiden's courier trying to move through here. 
and now he sees gyrocopter so that's why he's moving like this he blocks the camp in this corner takes a quick look and now he is looking for the courier spots it over here he knows it didn't come this way because of the watcher and if you don't see them you can just like tree dance to kind of like look around like this you'll take a little bit of damage sometimes when you go under the towers and you break things right here you see him coming for gyrocopter's courier but he has map awareness so he sees void spirits this is the best courier you can kill if the enemy mid laner buys a bottle and you can run over there and kill it in time that is fantastic now you can use tree dance to move faster but in the daytime they will see you moving between lanes so he goes into mischief and this is why the wind lace is so important because mischief you don't need to be in the courier form if you remember that from the past now any mischief form gives you 10 percent extra movement speed so that plus the wind lace helps you outspeed the couriers and sometimes they're slow because they're carrying regen so you can snipe them this means he does not have his bottle puck does have his bottle in mid matchups that are very close suddenly you just denied 600 over gold of regen from the enemy and the water runes and all that stuff terrible you've already done a great job helping here but you can maybe do more it depends on the game it depends on what's happening but consider ganking the mid lane right after you kill their courier so you see here he throws the blood grenade to slow void spirit and then uses tree dance to get another slow that alone might have been enough you just did some damage to the enemy mid laner and you denied their regen so now they're just sad and you leave your mid laner to handle the rest but if you can get a kill why not so you're gonna kill the mid laner leave someone has like rotated over to try to help you see mischief doesn't draw creep aggro either so he's just like free to move around this way and he has his eyes on this courier that has been waiting here you do not need to get every single courier but it is i would say particularly important to get the couriers in your lane before they deliver anything and the courier in the mid lane could be very nice after you get some courier kills and like stuff's going on maybe you gank you can buy your items from the enemy fountain just pick them up don't walk into the fountain and feed but like at the edge you can do it uh boots very helpful same idea you just want to move around really quickly killing couriers uh, extra regen if you need it blood grenade for the ganking sentries it is very important to keep this blocked and because you are killing the couriers of the enemy team if you have this blocked up and they're like oh I gotta unblock it buy sentries the courier died I don't have any sentries now and now that camp just stays blocked while you're off roaming around it goes looking for uh Beastmaster's courier here because that is the team telling him hey Beastmaster got his courier it's somewhere on the way back keep an eye out for it so that's Kind, it's not a requirement if you have good enough map awareness but it helps a lot because you know things are busy if the teams can tell you there's a courier on the way stuff like that then you'll have an easier time killing couriers this is the part where I maybe like recommend you guys be very careful so he's going to do things like block the enemy ancient camp with a sentry come top and gank now ganking is great and all but all of this is a lot of time out of your own lane and this works because this is a professional team and they all know what they're doing but in a pub game if your teammates feed in the lane all of this doesn't really pay off and you're just going to get reported you might get reported anyways but like you know what i mean right so be careful about this stuff if you play in a party game maybe you can do this but in your pubs I would be very careful of like literally we have not gone to the off lane since the very beginning right and a lot of your pub off laners will not know what to do so you see he has like the salve you can get some clarity so you never really have to go back to base you can like run through trees with mischief and then just immediately tree hop away uh after the courier or after the first observer dies which by the way there's like some trees around it's like a replay bug ignore those um he buys tranquils and buys another wind lace because he's gonna get drum so now he's super fast in mischief form 456 move speed he's gonna place another observer from fog of war so the enemy hopefully doesn't notice here's the thing so if you always put it here the enemies like especially if this catches on enemies may start putting sentries here and kill it it's not really the end of the world sentries are limited if they're putting it here they're not putting it somewhere else the thing is you also don't have to put your observer here so it could be here it could be up here it could be up here it could be up here you can put it outside of the base you can put it like here or here like in the mid lane you want to put stuff here right so it's a little bit up to you where you place them you just need to see some couriers on the way to continue killing them and the enemy like they're already losing couriers they're already losing money it feels really bad to have to take a guess at where they think the observer is 
And if they don't get it, they just kind of like wasted a sentry, right? And it's not even useful vision. Like you check here and you don't find an observer. You're like, well, at least now I know they don't have vision here. You're like, at least I know I, I wasn't going to get ganked in my base, I guess, right? It's it's like really weird. So um, just mix up your observers a little bit. I don't know. Kind of see how your pubs go. If people start sentrying around here, just like move them somewhere else and make sure as soon as you see it, you head on over intercept them it really does not matter where you kill them so that's why you can even do things like this uh you see he tries to avoid tower aggro if possible so he stands at the edge and you get the extra attack range as monkey king but i mean if you have to go into the tower it's no big deal that's what the tangos and the salve are for here's another observer you can place to spot like couriers and also just rotations in general and depending how much you do this you will end up under leveled so at the pro level if the ganks aren't working out he doesn't find a lot of d wards they will give Monkey King space to catch up on the levels he needs and to pick up a little bit of gold from the last hits. This is the part in pub games where rarely are roamers given space to then catch back up. Like you gang for them like six times and they're like, no, I still continue to farm everything and you get nothing. You're like, oh, I guess I'll just be super under leveled, right? So the space given back to the Monkey King who has made so much space earlier, that is how you catch back up but that's like unlikely to happen in your pubs as much, I feel like. So if you play in party games, you can plan for this, but if you don't, that's partly why I don't recommend you commit so hard to this because I don't think your teams will be able to handle that and they're not gonna help you then recover afterwards and they're just gonna report you like, I have a level two Monkey King at 15 minutes, he's so bad. And you're like, okay, well, I was kind of bad at what I was doing, but like you also never like made me space to catch up, so. You know, the risk is there. And you see for the last couple of minutes, he's been sitting here. So now he's level six and he's like kind of caught up. He has like decent net worth for everything he's been up to. After the laning stage, I'd say just kind of go back to regular support Monkey King. You'll see that his build is max uh, tree dance, get two points in boundless strike because you're really not using Jingu with this play style. You max out Primal Spring. This lets you like split push, catch up that way. And it's also just a good farming tool for Monkey King in general, Jingu afterwards. And then just like support Monkey King stuff. Uh, item wise, he does go tranquil drums and then sometimes like Yules, but Monkey King is a support that you can do like all sorts of stuff. This is not specifically a Monkey King support guide, so I'm not going to go that far into it, but uh, you have a very flexible skill build. I do think the early move speed is critical if you want to do this build. You cannot slowly chase after couriers and waste time that way. You have to do this as fast as possible. So I really like the idea of tranquils and windlace. I don't I have no idea if this is optimized, guys. This is some crazy stuff, right? ZingQ did it, Karaomi did it. I'm sure other people are trying it, but it's not like a standard thing. So I'm sure there's optimizations. If you wanna try stuff, go for it. But I think this makes a lot of sense. Some real quick math, the couriers do scale up. You don't need to know exactly what it is, but I will put up a table here. Essentially, the higher level the courier, the more gold it gives, the faster it moves, and the longer respawn. And that's kind of what I want to highlight. Do not kill both couriers in the bottom lane and then, haha, I'm gonna keep sitting here waiting for them. They're dead, they're not, gonna, they're, they're not coming back. So go do things. And then as you know, the respawn timer is about to pop up. Guess what? They still need their items. They're gonna call the courier again. So then you can go wait in that area to get the courier, but don't wait when they're dead. That's totally a waste of your time. So you don't need to know these numbers exactly, but just a rough idea. You can also compare it to your own courier. If you click the courier, you can come over here and kind of see like uh, some of the gold, the movement speed. I don't think you can see the death time here, so you'll just have to know that one. Uh, but I do want to show like when they die, um, like mine is dead for a minute. So in a minute, Marcy could go look for my courier again. This courier, so part of the reason this is so valuable, 35 gold. That's about how much a last hit is before they start scaling up. So if I spawn a creep wave, right? The gold from a melee creep is 34 to 39. Range creeps are 43 to 52. When we kill a courier, our entire team gets this gold. So 45 each because I killed a level five courier. The level is tied to the heroes, by the way. So that's why if you kill a bunch of couriers, it does add up for your team as a whole. Maybe one courier doesn't matter. So like I kill a level four courier, I get 40 gold. Everyone gets 40 gold. That 40 gold, nothing crazy as a team, 200 gold, like we're getting there. But when you kill like five couriers, 10 couriers throughout the laning stage doing this stupid stuff, it's like 2000 gold for your team as a whole or something. It depends on the levels, right? But that's kind of why this works along with the temporary power spike your team has where you have your items and they don't because of the couriers killed. Uh, so 
it's about combining all of this, not just the money you get from killing the couriers, but also capitalizing on that item timing. And also the chaos of the enemy team, like looking for you and being distracted and you can move more freely than they can. And then you like gank people. Like it's all of this stuff coming together to make this worth it. I mean, it is, it's like, it is worth it. It's just like, it's hard to like make it worth it. Let's talk about what to do if you are the offlaner and your Monkey King support is about to go courier sniping. How are you gonna play on your own? Now, first of all, you want to be an offlaner who is very self-sufficient. This might be hard to know if, if like your support doesn't tell you they're gonna do this, you may have already picked something different. But Centaur is fantastic for this strategy because he is uh, a very good offlaner right now. And DM is going to actually max retaliate first because it is the best skill for catching up on farm. You kind of need mana and health regen to really make use of these spells. He's not looking to play aggressive in the lane and get kills. He is just surviving through the laning stage and farming what he can. Do not go crazy at rune fights. You do not want to lose a lot of health before coming here. You need to highly prioritize just surviving. Now, notice here, he's gonna let one creep go through. Uh, you have a couple different approaches here. Again, it depends what tricks you wanna do, but you want to do whatever trick you think is best to get the lane to come up here and stay here because if Monkey King is doing his job, these camps are going to be blocked. At least this camp will be blocked. And that means if the equilibrium stays here, they can't do anything about it. And you will maybe not farm everything, but you'll get stuff. So you see that one creep moves forward. It is focused by all the other creeps. So it's gonna die first. It's gonna become a four versus three. Uh, Gyro also actually takes flat cannon and then just blasts it. I actually think that's probably a mistake. Not gonna worry about it right now because uh, I'm not as good as these guys. So maybe they have a different idea. But for the sake of the Monkey King support shenanigans, this is great for us in your pub games people can't balance the lane anyway so i'm sure they'll do some kind of like mess up to push it out off laners do not push it back out intentionally you need to try to keep it here as much as possible because you do not have a four support the four support is out here like doing wacky stuff in this game entity goes for a slightly different approach where centaur actually blocks the enemy creeps and this makes his creeps go under tower. I think they, uh, yeah, the, the Morphling tries to like counter this a little bit, but uh, a little too late. He actually even used a stomp to stun the creep so that all of this happens. So whatever, whatever nifty strategy you can come up with the heroes you play to get the creeps to push out right away. Here's the very first wave now moving up. The very start is going to be the hardest because this Crystal Maiden is level one and the Gyrocopter is level one. And they both started with 600 gold and they have 600 gold worth of items. You're level one offlaner and you have 600 gold worth of items. So yes, I'm at a disadvantage without that Monkey King. But every time there's a creep wave, if every single creep is denied in front of your face because you are 2v1, you get 50% of the XP, but you're by yourself. So you get all of that. On the other side, if you don't deny anything from the enemy team, they get every single last hit, they are getting 100% of the XP, but splitting it between two heroes. So XP wise, we are at least even, and if they don't deny everything and you do get a couple denies, you're actually pulling ahead of the enemy team. Gold wise, it starts out where they have 1200 total gold between the two heroes to your 600. But because all their couriers are freaking dead, they don't get anything else so as we progress through this laning stage you just got to keep in mind i can trade a little inefficiently because i can buy another set of tangos i can buy another style i can buy like the wraith band components and i am moving up to 800 900 1000 gold and gyro he's not getting any of that because his courier is dead so he is at 600 gold the entire time so you see DM here, he's not doing anything crazy. He's not chasing heroes. He's just getting XP he can. He's getting last hits. He's using creep equilibrium. He's gonna jungle when he can. I mean, not at level one and level two, but like you see him just like getting levels, getting XP, trying to like draw them into his next creep wave. This is all he's gonna do. He's never gonna like, oh, I need last hits. I gotta like walk up here. No, 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 I, I play it safe. There's something here for me to play for. I'm gonna work on this. The early levels are the hardest. The longer this goes, the easier this becomes. So you see, he's just gonna play very safe. Anytime he doesn't know where Crystal Maiden is and he's worried about being wrapped on, he's just gonna be careful. He's gonna do a lot of creep aggro like this. 
just pick up a couple last hits. And as we zoom through the laning stage again, you're like, oh no, Gyro's getting so farmed. Gyro has none of that money actualized. It's all just sitting in the courier dead. An entire Falcon Blade is dead on the courier. He still only has 600 gold and then whatever he picked up from the Lotus. So this is the part where if you're playing a pub, I recommend as Monkey King, you don't spend too much time just like sitting back here waiting for couriers. Like do it a little bit, like play the lane. You see the couriers coming out, go kill them, maybe do the mid gank. But then I think you come back bottom. I think that's gonna be the safest play for a pub game where we, we do a reduced amount of courier sniping just because conceptually, yes, it could work if everyone on the team knows what they're doing, but it's just very hard for that in a pub, right? And at this point, and maybe a little earlier in time as well, you come back here, level-wise, your offlaner is not that far from like the enemy team. In fact, your offlaner might be ahead in XP for the reasons we explained. Uh, your offlaner has bought a couple small items. You as the Monkey King maybe got some items from the base. You have some items. You have a slow, a stun, a blood grenade. Uh, they are still just sitting at their 600 gold, right? Even though they have picked up last hits, they have passive gold, none of it is ever getting to them because you have this observer all the way back here. And as Monkey King, you like see them like coming out. So you like play, play, play. Okay, cut, intercept, kill it. Okay, back, play, play, play. Okay, another one, cut, intercept, kill it. So you're getting the couriers, but you're still playing the lane. I think that's best for pub games. If you're playing mid and you know you have a Monkey King support who's gonna do this, pick someone who can apply some early aggression because you can see while waiting for the courier, if the enemy mid is low, maybe I'll just kill them with a blood grenade into the primal spring. So uh, mid laners, you don't want to be like some super passive farmer, then you can't really apply the extra pressure, which is the benefit of if the mid laners courier is dead, they're not getting items, they're not getting regen. So every time you trade, even if it's a little inefficient, you have your bottle, you have your extra regen that you might need to buy, you have your items that you're purchasing to make you stronger, they don't, so you can win these trades. And it never hurts to do it again. You're not gonna take your passive if you're doing this because you're not you're not hitting enemy heroes. So take your stun, take your tree dance, and honestly probably go like 2-3-0 or something like that. Just straight up max out tree dance after that. And then maybe you can get a point in like Jingu Mastery after that. Uh, but once you have both these skills, you can do things like this, stun into slow. It's not bad. If you tank some shots, no big deal. You might even be able to mischief some tower shots. Maybe you die, but you get a kill for your mid laner. All totally worth it just you know don't feed so what do you do if the enemy team is doing this to you now one thing you can do is just wait here by the high ground this is a little bit unlucky of him where for whatever reason i don't know how he decides where he chooses to do it like go this way or this way right that's kind of why they mix it up at the pro level they're doing some research in your pubs you can probably like do the same thing back to back it's like not such a big deal but you can kind of sit here and see if Monkey King ends up running in or you catch him. I would, I would actually say like step out a little further to see if you can like catch Monkey King hopping into the trees this way. Maybe you're not killing him, uh, but maybe you can, like especially if you have a Tanger ready to sit here, you could get the stuns and you have people here. But all sitting here is like also weird, right? So like just one person is kind of doing it. Um, that is an option for you if your team wants to maybe move this way and like, oh, an enemy Monkey King support, let's like all go this way and see. And if we don't find him, that's okay. We'll just go get the bounty runes. That's another option for you. This is my own personal theory because this is not a very common strategy. So we haven't gotten to see it too much. But in theory, the reason leaving your offlaner alone so much is bad is because the two heroes will wreck that solo offlaner, and then from there, like you're losing lanes. But Monkey King, by roaming around and killing couriers and blocking camps and stuff like that, it does open up your offlaner to get something out of the lane, and your whole team gets gold every time you kill couriers, and then that idea of we're denying items to allow this stuff to work, uh, all that comes into play. If you are the team and your couriers are getting sniped, first of all, if you think it's gonna happen, I highly recommend supports. Start with two sentries in the safe lane so that uh, if this camp is blocked, you need to get it open. You need to win this lane. Wherever the Monkey King is abandoning, you need to win it. I'm not saying you have to like kill the offlaner on repeat. If you can, that's great. But if you can't, you need to at least be able to do pulls and deny XP completely from the offlaner. Because earlier I said, if you deny it in front of him, he's still gonna keep up. You need to deny it back here when he's over here and he gets literally zero XP. So make sure you have enough regen, enough sentry, stuff like that, because there's a very good chance your courier is never gonna get here. If you desperately need your courier, I think it's okay to walk back and meet it. 
Uh, it kind of depends where Monkey King has been sniping the couriers, but you can also, I'm not gonna say you intentionally wait to level four, but once you are level four, the courier can fly. And so now you can send it, you have to manually do it, but it can send it all the way around like this and Monkey King will not be able to kill it. And then you meet it, like you either have it come back out here or maybe you walk down and meet it and then like come back up here, right? The courier just cannot die at that point. But many people are really bad about microing their own couriers, myself included. And so, you know, it just comes straight from the base, straight out, and the Monkey King keeps killing them. If you think you can get the kill, I'm gonna say it's okay to rotate, but you need to be very confident in the Monkey King kill. So something like this, where your team rotates and gets the Monkey King, okay, great. But it is people rotating all the way over here. So for example, in this lane, uh-oh, the 2v1, blah, 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 right? The support teleports away from that lane. You now know it's like 30 seconds or something. Your offlaner is going to be okay. Here, by the way, uh, you see like the level advantage on the Centaur, even though he's been 2v1 the whole time, right? He's been the only one here. So he now has a level advantage over the carry. If you rotate and don't get the kill, that is the problem. So like Monkey King kills a courier. You see he's denying the Morbin mass, pretty good. Uh, and then they're like, oh, now we know where he is. Let's try to get him, right? So Techies is coming over. Lions over here, they're like, oh, let's get him. I stunned him. Mars starts TPing in, and then he's like, oh, this isn't gonna work, actually. Oh, no, actually, Marana canceled it. I forgot. So he was gonna come here, right? Techies is coming over here. Wind Ranger's thinking about going over, and then Monkey King still ends up getting away because between an AoE stun, Mischief, and then this tree dance, it is really hard to kill Monkey King. And if he gets away, like, 50% of the time, I think even less, like I think if you get away like 10% of the time and then you die the rest, it's somewhat still okay because so many people are coming back here to try to kill an under-leveled Monkey King and they're getting very little out of it because there's not a lot of money to killing an under-leveled support Monkey King. You're giving up pressure in this lane, in this lane, in this lane, right? Maybe you're not even getting the kill, you're just wasting their time and one under-leveled Monkey King is taking up the attention of multiple higher-leveled heroes that is so good for your team. So in my opinion, you have to ignore the Monkey King unless you are highly confident you can kill him because you have the right heroes or whatever. And otherwise, micro your couriers around the map and really focus in on your lanes to punish the Monkey King for not being here. The last thing I recommend you have is 12,000 behavior score because let's... Let's be real. You need you need some room to drop here when you try this out, especially in your pub game. So I will give it a go in my games if you want to drop by the stream. And if I get a good game of it, I will upload it. I am going to do a reduced version as far as I think will work in a pub. And if you're too scared to try this, you can live vicariously through me in the same way we're living vicariously through the pros who are willing to do it with a very professional setting and teams that will work with them. Uh, but I, I do want to end, guys. I really think this is hard to pull off in a pub game because the Monkey King needs to do it all very, very well. The offlaner needs to do it very, very well. Those are the most two important parts, I would say, but it helps a lot if the mid laner can really capitalize on the slight advantage you give it, just like a little bit of extra gold and like, oh, no regen for one minute, top tier mids, done. That guy is so dead without his bottle, right? It's a huge difference. Up here, like the ganks, like it makes a difference. In your pub games, you kill like three couriers, your offlaner feeds twice, the whole point of the strategy is gone. You kill the courier mid, you're like fantastic, you attempt to dive, you guys screwed up, feed double kill, the whole point of all of this is gone. So I think it's really tough to pull off. I would just go for like a couple courier kills bottom and like maybe mid, and then probably just play Monkey King support normally from there.